You're listening to the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast with Chris and Garrett. So, so you're going to try to get some Firestorm locations in this weekend. Starter. What did I say? Firestarter. Firestorm. 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 Hold on. <laughs> that, that's just that's I need that that's definitely the, the I, I need a little I need a handheld fan to bring with me and so I could like when I'm recording myself I could blow it in my my hair plug my hair back a little bit so I'd be like because you know that was one of the things in Firestarters every time she was about ready to set something on fire it's like her hair the wind would start blowing her hair like back like mm-hmm. and then it's like you know flame on you know it's like Yep, that type of that type of deal, and then it's like, are you just there for the day? Are you staying overnight? uh, Yeah, it'd be very quick. It'd be very quick, man. We'll, um, yeah, we may. We're, I don't know what we're gonna do exactly yet there. If I if I have time to film any before or film, I mean, because like some of those some locations are are at night that I want to film. So it's like I I kind of like to do that. If I can, I try to, um, in my videos, I, I really like to, if it was a night shot in the movie, yeah. I like to try to get it at night and then vice versa, day shots, you know, not, I mean, and, and sometimes a night shot's better to do it in the daytime so you can actually kind of see a little better what's going on because you don't have the, you don't got the movie production lights and, yeah. you know, like, you know, like, you know, like they do in the movie. So, so, so sometimes you can, you can point out things and, you can be, you know, you can you can talk about things, just point stuff out a little better in the daylight than you can at night. But at the nighttime, you, you get that, you know, you, you know, you line that shot up. That's just, you know, I love that then and now comparison. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But with but with Firestarter coming, but with the new movie coming out in May, right? I was going to do Firestarter. It was on it was on my list. It's not if, it, but it wasn't so soon on my list. I was planning on doing it later. Yeah. And it just got, and I'm moving, I'm bumping it up um, to kind of coincide with uh, with the new movie coming out because I think that's people will be talking about it. But to me, this is it's more than just like my episode on Firestar is going to be more than just a film location video. It's I'm really going to try to cover that the you know like the, the the historical significance of of the Wilmi of the movie that it was the first movie in Wilmington and. Uh, and it started the whole it started the whole film industry yeah. down there uh, that still exists to this day, and it's you know it's thriving down there right now. And um, you know they they were talking about I li- there's a good podcast um, episode, and this is for anybody who's interested in this, and I and, and I think you would enjoy it. It is um, hold on, I got it on my phone. It's, let me pull this back. It's Cape Fear Unearthed, and it's produced by the Star News down in Wilmington. And there's a lot, it's a lot of history type stuff with oh, yeah. the Cape Fear area. But but there's an episode called Still Burning, the story of Firestarter. Oh, okay. And Hunter Ingram, uh, who used to work for the paper, he he ran that, he ran that podcast for a long time. And he 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 actually interviews Martha De La, Martha De Laurentis. I uh, did this at the, at the 35th anniversary of Firestarter. And um, that's obviously before her death this past year. Um, but it's it's a really that's a really good episode. Um, it, it 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 talks about the significance of I mean a lot of things I will cover in my video, but it's it's on a podcast, and so you get to, you know. But but he talks to Martha, and she's taught you know, and she and she gives her rec you know her recollection of how things unfolded and how how it came to be and, and all this kind of stuff. And just, you know, and just how proud, you know, she was of the area and how much they, they loved it at her and Dino. I mean, like really loved the whole Wilmington area. So it just, it just really, it's a really neat episode. And that's kind of where my video is going to kind of come from, even like I said, more than the film location, which I, which I love to do, but I, and, and I will, I will showcase the, the you know, the filming locations of Firestarter, but I'm really going to try to like emphasize a lot of the significance of the historical aspect of it and what it means. That's great. Um, I know there's, yeah, the she mentions this again. It is called Cape Fear Unearthed. Unearthed, Unearthed uh, ED. I, um, I may, Sorry, my um, Southern. Yeah. 
I'll I'll uh, get the link for it. I may share it in the show. Yeah, it's called Still Still Burning: The Story of Firestarter. Okay. Now she mentions, you know, how that how North Carolina was kind of like warning. It's kind of like almost like you know Jim Hunt was the governor at the time, but she talked about how they were kind of like really you know you know desiring you know yeah, the movie business to come and that the movie um and you watched this not i mean just a couple of years ago i know you're talking to me about it the one with natalie wood up, filmed up and oh, yeah, around brainstorm. duke and rtp brainstorm brainstorm so like that's that's one of the first modern films that was filmed in yeah. in north carolina yeah and then and then obviously the what you know what transpired in wilmington and then firestarter being the first and then and then, and then Dino's opening the studio down there. And then, of course, we talk about Bull Durham coming, um, Dirty Dancing. I guess Dirty Dancing first, then Bull Durham. Mm-hmm. Um, Dan, uh, what's the um, – uh, is it Last of the Mohicans? Was yeah. that filmed yeah. also up there? And um, Yep, that's filmed as well up in, up in Lake Lore area up there at Chimney Rock, that the area up there. The Fugitive yeah. in the 90s. Correct. Yeah. So you visited that location. Just, huh? You visited that location for the. I've not been to that location yet. I thought you had. Huh? I have not. Because I think the train is still yeah. there, or at least some part of it. It is. I've, I've seen videos. I mean, there's. I mean, I'm. There's several. Yeah. Film location videos on. Um, uh, on that. So it's like, I mean, I want to go to it. I mean, just, I mean, not, and I know people have done it already, done the video for it, but I mean, but for me, it's just because, you know, we've, we taught us before. That's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite movies. That's, that's one of my favorite Harrison Ford movies. Uh, I mean, it may not be my most favorite, but I'm just saying it's up there with me. I just, I love that movie in the nineties. It's, um, I mean, I, I mean, I got into watching the old TV show, The oh, Fugitive. Yeah. I got it. I mean, and then I had that on, VHS. I probably still have the VHS in, out in the my garage. I mean, of, of the fugitive. That's how much I was. I mean, I have my own copy of it. Um, I was. I was a. Uh, and so, like for me, it's like, yeah, I would love to. Um, I mean, at some point in time, I want to go to Chicago. That's a, that's on my bucket list of, yeah. of places I want to go. And of course, I want to do the John Hughes more than anything. But there's movies like that that I wouldn't mind covering. Um, you know, and of course, I want to catch the dude that I want to do the I want to do the Chicago locations for Raw Deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to do Wildcats. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are just also, a few. That's just, know, the I mean, but, but, but you got Risky they, Business. Huh? They had, um, they shot Gotham City was Chicago for the. Of course. Movies. I mean, that's all the bat. Yeah, that's a that's the Dark Knight. You know, that's mm-hmm. all that Batman Begins. That's that's all. I mean, which is I mean, you could I could spend. I mean, my goodness, I could probably spend a month easy up in Chicago just alone doing different oh, yeah. movie locations and Absolutely. just having fun with it. I mean, of course, plane trains and automobiles. I mean, that, again, that's a lot of John Hughes stuff up there. I mean, Uncle Buck. I mean, we can we can go. I mean, I mean, like like not just the not you know not just the Sixteen Candles, uh, and Breakfast Club, and you know that kind of and Weird Science. But we're talking about the and Ferris Bueller. But we're talking about even she's having a baby. All that was filmed. Home Alone, oh my gosh, I mean, that's that's huge when it comes to, you know, every Christmas, oh my goodness. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But for here, I mean, I'm just going back to North Carolina, that's, um, I mean, th- th- that's been on my, and I like to do anniversary dates, but in this case here, it's, it's um, even though like, the, I think it will be the, I think the next one is the 40th anniversary, but in this case here, I'm not waiting until the 40th. I'm just going to, I mean, and, and not say, who knows, maybe one time, you know, uh, there's one location I would not be able to get to. And that is, that's the Orton Plantation. I'll talk about that now. Uh, it's the, the, uh, the, the, one of the, a descendant of the original owner. And the original owner was a guy named Roger Moore. I've already done some research on this. And the guy who's, who bought it is like a hedge fund guy. He's a he's a billionaire, and he is a like, like a great great grandson of this guy. Mm-hmm. And he he you know he bought the property back from you know from the people um, who who owned it during the Firestarter days, right. and 
he, but he's closed in the, and, and that Orton plantation was open for a long time. It was open. There was a gardens. There was, you can see the house. Uh, there was, I think there's a, there a cemetery, a family cemetery there. All that was kind of like, was open to the public. You could go, but he closed that. I mean, been more than several years, maybe eight or nine years ago. Now he closed it. Uh, and he, you know, he's, he's, he's done a lot of remodeling. I think he is um, trying to get the gardens back up to where they're original. He's growing one. I, I think he was trying to get, there was, they, they grew rice there back in the day. Mm-hmm. And it's like one of the largest rice paddies in North Carolina. He was, mm-hmm. he was, he was trying to get that back under. Um, he wanted to start growing rice there again. Cool. I th- it looks like from the satellite images, looks like he built a huge mansion there, like, away from the original house oh, okay. but still like it's it, yeah. i mean like i mean like it looks massive i mean i mean i mean the guy's a i mean he's yeah he's rich beyond rich i mean this is not whatever but i'm hoping at some point in time in the future maybe he'll open the Orton plantation back up to the public at least in small doses you know i mean need this yeah. like you know hey for a weekend or something you come in and you can see the gardens again or you can see the house like um, yeah, I'm mean, like, talking least, the original like, house. Like a seasonal kind of thing. If you open it up at Christmas time, like it'd be decorated or. You know, oh, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, it'd be great. Mm-hmm. But in saying that, that that's probably the one location I will not be able to really go dive into. Yeah. And that's you know that's the shop. That's the in the movie. The, uh, the shop is the agency yeah. that's after uh, Drew Barrymore's character Charlie and her dad uh, Andy and. David and that and that's kind of and, and the shop's been mentioned in several other Stephen King works. Mm-hmm. Uh, those who are big Stephen King fans will know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Uh, but 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 that that Warren Plantation represents the shop, and it's supposed to be uh, Virginia, and that's kind of like and it's kind of I, and I guess it's supposed to be a little bit kind of like the CIA. I guess it's kind of you know yeah. a, a shadow a shadowy kind of organic clients you know organization. Yeah, about three summers ago, um, we were down at Holden Beach, which is right between Wilmington and, and um, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And the the beach house where we were staying, we were renting. Um, you know, they the owners have like books on the bookshelf if you have need something to read while you're down there. And they had a copy of Firestarter, like the like the original hardcover edition. And so I read it while I have I, that too, by the way. What's that? I have that too, by the way. Um, so I read it and I read it like in a day because, and I oh, read wow. it years ago, but I read it in a day because it is so fast paced. Like it's, some of his books can be really long. It could be a long haul to get through them, but that book just like, it reads really quick. And it's got, I mean, the adaptation, uh, the Drew Barrymore adaptation I mean, it was fairly close to the book, fairly close. Um, and, uh, you know, so reading it and then not long ago, well, I say not long ago, it's been a couple of years. Like after I read the book, um, I watched the movie again. And, and then, and then last summer, you know, you and I were trying to track down one of the houses, like Charlie's house, um, in Wilmington, trying to find, boy, that was some detective work. Um, where, yeah, where you're blind, you're blind, you know, <laughs> so you're blind scene. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, speaking of uh, David Keith, um, not to be confused with Keith David, uh, the uh, very talented uh, African-American actor who was in They Live and uh, some other great movies. But um, David Keith, uh, so the other night, uh, my sons and I watched uh, Ben Affleck in Daredevil. And David Keith plays Jeez. Matt Murdock's dad. He plays Jack uh, Murdock, the the boxer. Yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, I yeah, really I did. Him, I when just... I saw him, I thought of Firestarter because we'd been talking about it not too long ago. But yeah, um, I remember he he did like he was a guy that. I mean, when Firestarter came out, I mean, he kind of had some. He was in a lot of movies. I feel like back in the eighties, he was a hot commodity he was he was and he's great in that movie he was, he's, he's really like, great in that role he and drew on fire dude he yeah. was on fire that wow his career was totally on fire like somebody set him on fire it was crazy he was a fire starter himself 
He was, but here's the deal. You know, I've, I've listened to some other, po- actually some other podcasts on Firestarter, trying, trying to gather as much information as possible. And it's funny, a lot of people don't like him. Like they call him, uh, you know, like they call him a, um, he's a, he's a um, Kurt Russell wannabe. Uh, he's like the Walmart version. He's the Walmart <laughs> version of, 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 of that. Walmart His Kurt Russell. Walmart Kurt Russell version. Oh, they talk about that, his, today's, um, his birth, today's Kurt's birthday. I, th- I think. Yeah, well, uh, was well it? happy birthday, uh, yeah. David Keith. No, wrong one. Keith David. Keith David. <laughs> no, it's whatever David, his name is. David Keith, but it's not his birthday. It's Kurt Russell's birthday. Yeah. Well, no, it's his birthday too. It's like Bizarro World. It's his oh, birthday. Yeah, okay. It's his birthday as well. Right, it's opposites right, right, or right. whatever. Right. That. But the, I mean, but here's the deal. You know, I watched the I watched the movie obviously because I've been trying to look at locations and getting my you know kind of get my head around the the script and what's going on. His interaction with Drew Barrymore and I. I mean, we should probably do a whole. I should probably save some of this for another just a fire starter uh, whole episode. We should do that. Yeah. Uh, when it comes time for the, you know, like for the new movie, maybe we'll do the new movie, like kind of like we did with Scream, and mm-hmm. did like watch watch it and talk about talk about the original and talk about the new one all at the same time. But but like I watched his interaction with with Drew Barrymore, and like he's really good. You, it's believable, like th- that he's her father, mm-hmm. that he cares for her, he's Absolutely. trying to protect her, yeah. and whatever. And like I read something that like Richard Dreyfus was a possible as a possible he was a possible actor for the role of of um of Andy and 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 how great Richard Dreyfus is and he is he's a he's a great actor I just don't know and he could be what I don't know I, I mean I, he could probably he could probably act it and do it I just I, I just have a hard time picturing like I said he he really just had that it would have been a you believe they were it would have been a totally different dynamic. Right. I mean, I think he's a great actor. But too. like this other podcast was making fun of, they said that he that his favorite thing to say, and I guess I'll, I'll go and say, I'm going to quote, okay? I'm going to quote this. He, his favorite thing was to say, you son of a bitch. <laughs> That's what his, and, you know, and, they're, and, they're, and talk about his Southern accent, the way he did it. He's like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you know, he kind of like, and he goes, you killed my wife. And he's like, you're, you're blind. blind. And it's like, you're blind. And it's just, you know, and, and, and he is from Knoxville, Tennessee. My mom's from Tennessee. I, I, I get the accent, you know, it's ice and it's nice. And I mean, I, I totally get I, my, my family's from Tennessee. I, I get it. But, you know, so, so I think they kind of work. I think some people maybe take his Southernism a little too much, but I, I think it worked for that film. Um, I just, you know, I think there were other issues probably with it that probably could have been a little better, but it had a really good cast. I know, I know we say that all the time, and I'm sure I mentioned that in my video, but uh, yeah. on it, and we'll talk about that, I guess, at a later point in time. But I mean, I mean, it's got some Oscar winners in that. I mean, I mean, when you got uh, Art Carney and uh, what's the guy who played um, John Rayner or John Rainmaker? George, George yeah, C. thank you, George C. Scott. Yeah, I mean, you got two, you got two Oscar winners right there, and you got Martin, you got um, Martin Sheen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you got some, you got some good, you got some firepower there. That oh, I did. So this is something I'm, I'm going to bring up now. This is this is not the hardback one, but this is my original. This is my original Firestarter book from for, from when I was a teenager, yeah. and I still have it. And I mean, it's it's got water. I mean, it's got water damage though. It's not good condition. And now, I mean, it looks good from it looks good from the outside. Like this looks like oh, it looks looks really nice. But you look on the inside, it's got some water damage and stuff yeah. to it. But but I do have a hardback condition as well. Yeah. Um, and I got a special surprise for on my video. I got a special thing, got like a a piece of I don't I I'm not gonna say history. It's just the fact that it goes along with with um with the movie i'm not going to give it away it's but it's it's kind of like oh that's you know i don't know it's i think it's cool you know other people might go oh that's what your special thing was yeah okay but yeah i so like i said about, it's talking about david keith again um <clears throat> so after happy birthday david keith after uh, oh i mean kurt russell sorry i um 
you know, I was talking about how he was popping up on a lot of stuff. There was a movie he did. It wound up going to HBO. It was like an HBO original movie um, that was called Gulag. And it was basically, he plays like a TV reporter and like a former athlete who's in Moscow. And because of a misunderstanding, he's arrested by the KGB. And they imprison him in one of their gulags in, near the Arctic Circle, like in Siberia or something like that. And there's a, a British prisoner who's played by Malcolm McDowell. And um, they basically join forces to try to figure out a way to escape the prison. Of course, it's one of those things that like nobody escapes and lives because it's in the middle of the Arctic wastelands there in Russia. And oh you know, wow! So they hatch a plan to escape, but apparently it's 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 allegedly based on a true story. But anyway, that was at a time when we had finally gotten cable, and so that was that was one of the first HBO original films I ever saw, and I just remember. It was like him being in it, and I remembered him from Firestarter, but I don't know. It's probably not on any streaming service, because it's pretty old. You might find it on YouTube, but it's called Gulag, and it's... He's What's it old. called? Gulag. I can, I can look while you do that. Yeah, I mean, the thing I remember him from at the time, and I didn't... I mean, it wasn't like I was watching like that multiple times, was Officer and a Gentleman. Yeah, you know, it was a little bit too. It's a little bit too, too too adult for me, and I really didn't care. It wasn't like it really interests me. There's, but I did see it. One. There's another one he did. This I saw this on cable. Uh, it's pretty bad, and if you can find it, it's definitely worth seeing because it's so bad. It was an Indiana Jones ripoff, and it was called "The Further Adventures of Tennessee Buck." From it's in from 1988. It is such a it's such a ripoff of the Indiana Jones. But well, it was, it's perfect for him. It was it's probably made, catered around him since he's from right. Tennessee. Exactly. So it's it's uh, it was made in Sri Lanka. It was wasn't even made here. So it was like a low budget, um, but it's like a comedy. Like, it's kind of like trying to be like a Raiders of the Lost Ark or whatever. Um, at least that's how I remember I mean, it. And he's still. I mean, he's he's his I am. He's got 124 outing credits. The guy's still working. It's not oh, yeah. like you know he may not be. You know Tom Cruise or anything of you know stardom, but he's you know he's been, he's a working he's a working actor, man. I don't you know people can slam on him, I guess, and call him the the Walmart Kurt Russell all they want, but you know the guy's still Major League Two. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He was in that. Yeah, which I just watched Major League again the other night. Cool. Okay, there it is. I'm just Major um, such a good movie. That was one of the movies that we would play all the time after nine o'clock in the video store where I worked in college. That was like one of the ones we would always go to. It's like it's nine o'clock, put Major League on. Um, hey, before I forget, since our podcast has the the word snack in it, what's your snack tonight? Do you have a snack tonight? I have your peppermint patty tonight. That's uh, my snack. I've got. I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep my uh, calories down. Well, same here. I've got uh, Cheezos, which are like these crunchy Parmesan snacks. Because I'm trying to do the keto thing. Um, they're not bad. They've also got quinoa in it or something, but it tastes like Parmesan cheese. But okay. Okay, so Gulag, real quick. Gulag, gulag is not available zero sugar. Um, anywhere. And I got some. Dot sunkissed or cook sunkissed zero sugar or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I'm not used to saying that yet, but yeah, that's what it is. So I'm gonna look up and see if okay, it says it's not available, but I want to see if it's available. Sometimes it says it's not available and you can still buy it somewhere. I'm just curious if uh, I bet you it's on YouTube. So yeah, there's a DVD for it out there. You can get it. I mean, it's not messing, it's a about fourteen ninety five is what? Is it on YouTube? It's on YouTube. That's great. I'm have to Look check it out, right man. Now. And and the, the cover of it looks almost looks it looks like his look from Firestarter. It's got that longer hair, kind of what I'm trying to rock right now. I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do. Oh my gosh! I'm trying to be David Keith. Oh my goodness! There you go. I'm trying to do. You're the Big Lots version of David Keith. I'm trying. I'm trying to be David Keith. I'm David. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my David Keith invitation when I'm down in Wilmington. I'm gonna be I'm gonna like 
that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to uh, try to do my inner, try to pull my Southern. Well, it's not hard to be Southern for me, but it, his accent is different. I got to say it's not, I mean, like that Tennessee accent is different than, you know, than our North, you know, like than our North Carolina accent. Um, his is definitely. Oh yeah. I mean, he's got a different. So, well, David Keith is still with us, thankfully, but uh, this yeah. week we, uh, we lost an actor that uh, I just happened to be watching a TV series that he was in when the news came out that um, actor William Hurt passed away this week at 71. Um, yep. In honor of William Hurt, I'm wearing my the Avengers shirt. That's right. Because he definitely was in the Marvel movies, played General Ross, and then it like was it Secretary of State Ross? That's right. That's yeah. right. Um, so yeah, William Hurt. I mean, I remember him all the way back to like the late seventies, early eighties, and he's one of those actors that I always felt like if he was in something, the movie might not be good or the show might not be good, but he would always be good. Uh, he was just always a really solid actor. But what I'm watching him in right now, uh, I think it was one of the last things he did. Uh, it was a TV show called Condor, and it's based off the Robert Redford movie, The Three Days of the Condor, which is like a okay. espionage, you know, kind of uh, cloak and dagger kind of um, action thriller. And so uh, I love that kind of stuff. Hurt, it's a great show. It's on uh, the streaming service uh, Epics. Or the the cable channel epics, um, I got it through Amazon Prime because they had a deal where it was like ninety nine cents a month for a year or whatever. Or I got a student discount or something, and so I decided to sign up for it because I'd heard that the series was really good. And I'm about I think there was only two seasons. I'm about five episodes into the first season, and it's really good. But Hurt, um, he's one of the good guys in it, and he's really really good. Um, so. It's just, you know, it's sad to hear of his passing. I mean, apparently he had terminal cancer and he'd been diagnosed back in 2018 and he still managed to, to work. Although I noticed watching Condor, which I think was shot probably around the time he was diagnosed, he looks frail. He looks frail in it. Um, but nevertheless, just great actor. But um, I was thinking back on all the movies that he was in, you know, like The Big Chill, Altered State, Body Heat, with Kathleen Turner, no relation. <laughs> um, and cousin, cousin Kathleen. No, um, she'd be my aunt, Kathleen. <laughs> um, let's see. He was also in the accident. She was hot tourist. back in the day, ma'am. Yeah, the accidental tourist, which also had Kathleen Turner and had Gina Davis. That's that was like the first. Gina Davis is. The first movie of William Hurt's that I really, that one and Broadcast News that he did with Holly Hunter and Albert Brooks, those two movies are where I really noticed him. And I know he did a lot of other big movies. He was nominated for Oscars. Um, and I, I I did not do my homework in terms of, I don't know if he ever won one. I know he was nominated several times or three times, three or four times. But there's one movie I wanted to mention because I think it would be right up your alley if you have not seen it yet. Did you ever see the movie with Kevin Costner called Mr. Brooks? I never, I, I know that, I know what that movie, like I, I remember seeing the, okay. the you know, the cover that. and it's the movie poster, but anything. I don't think I ever saw it. I'm not going to spoil anything, but William Hurt is in it. He plays a major role in it. And he is really good. This is probably another one of his best roles. And it's like that movie kind of came and went. I don't know why, because it's a terrific movie. It's one of it's a movie I've seen twice because I liked it so much. Um, it would be up your alley because it definitely has a Dexter kind of vibe, like serial killer vibe, uh, but it's done in a very intelligent way. It's the kind of way that I really wish they had. They were they were talking about doing a sequel or a trilogy at one point, but I guess because it didn't do that well, they decided to scrap it. But they were setting it up for a really interesting thing. But the first movie is great. I mean, it's a good standalone movie. Demi Moore is in it. Um, yeah, it's good. It's from uh, it's from the 2000s, I think. I forget the actual, it might be 2008, something like that. 
2007, 2008, but it's good. You should check it out. Check it William out. Hurt's By the way, he did win Academy. He did win Academy for Best Actor for Kiss of the Spider Woman. The Spider Woman. I, yep. You know, as soon as I said that, I thought, I think he got it. And he's, he was nominated like two other times at least. Yeah. He was yeah. um, he, he was, was nominated, nominated for Children of the Lesser God and, and for Lesser. Broadcast News. Uh huh. He's terrific in Broadcast News. Um, he and <clears throat> Excuse me. He and Holly Hunter and Albert Brooks are really good in that movie. And I think, and I think he was probably nominated for another one for 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 um, for the Credible Hulk because mm -hmm. General Ross that was a great role. Oh yeah. No, it was he. I'm I'm, I'm kidding about him being nominated for that, but he but but he I liked his role as that. I did I like him in that movie. I really I liked his loved take. His scene. Um, I, I need to go back and look at it, but when he shows up in the the Marvel movies, like after the Incredible Hulk, like when he shows up in Captain America: Civil War and Black Widow, like I don't remember from the Civil War because I don't. Mark Ruffalo wasn't in Captain America: Civil War, right? Because I think he was off world with Thor in Thor. Um, Ragnarok. Right. But I had always hoped for like a Hulk movie where Mark Ruffalo and William Hurt would, you know, be paired paired up because, you know, in the Hulk comics and then also in the yeah, Hulk, Edward Edward Norton, Norton, Norton. Ross is one of the antagonists. I mean, he's he's basically enemy of the Hulk because his daughter is the one who's involved with Bruce. Uh, yeah. Um, is it Betty? Is that her name? Yeah, it's Betty. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, but, and, yeah, I, I would have loved to have seen them, you know, go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Um, but, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah. So, just, you know, he was a really good actor. And I definitely think, you know, he he really, his heyday was in the 80s and 90s. Um, he was in a lot of movies, a lot of successful movies. And then he also um, appeared on some really great television shows. Um, there was another one he did with Glenn Close called Damages. That one he did one season of that with her. Uh, he was really good in that. And um, yeah, so yeah, just, uh, just he was nominated that. for a primetime Emmy for that and a Golden Globe. Uh -huh. He was great. That it was. Yeah. There were four seasons of Damages, I think, four or five, and he was like, you know, one of the big stars in that season. I think it was the second season. And uh well he's he was also in Nightmares and Dreamscapes, which is since we mentioned Stephen King earlier, the Firestarter, that's which cool. episode you quick think? tie in. He's it's called episode Battleground. I don't know which one that his his character was Jason Renshaw. I don't know which which I don't remember episode, that episode that exactly it was. But it's Battleground is the name of the episode. And he was on a, he was an episode of King and Queen, so that's yeah, that's right up there on top of his list of. Yeah, I like Kevin James, by the way. That's <laughs> yeah. that's the reason I had to bring up some stuff like that because you know you know what you know it's like I like stuff like that. I like it when an actor who who's of that caliber, Academy Award winner and Golden Globe winner and nominated and all this kind of stuff that you know that occasionally you'll do something like King of Queens. You know, it's like hey. Um, oh, yeah. it's it's kind of like Robert Redford wanted to do that romantic comedy um, that we covered. Um, Legal Eagles. Legal Eagles. I mean, it's the same thing. It's kind of like, you know, he's, he's a, he, he, he kind of reminded me, you know, he's kind of like the um, Leonardo DiCaprio of, of that time frame. You know, you, you, you think about Robert Redford, you know, he always was picking like really good, strong movies that were going to like, weren't always going to be commercial successes, even though a lot of his movies were because he was such a star power, but he always still picked movies that were, you know, artistic and that were going to have a, you know, supposedly, you know, by, by a good director or a really good script, even if it was not well received by the masses. Yeah. And so it was kind of cool that he wanted to do that movie. And I kind of look at something like this that, you know, he's kind of like, look, you know, I could do King of Queens. You know, it's like, I know it's, it's, it's not, it's not cutting edge Netflix or whatever. Some of these series that are whatever, but that's, you know, that's kind of, uh, 
I like it when they do stuff like that. Yeah. 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 It, it um, kind of shows their human side a little bit more absolutely. of like going, they're not always. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. He had a, you know, I remember there would be some criticisms of hurt. Um, well, there's one about his personal life. Apparently, you know, so he had a relationship with Marley Matlin that he starred with, whom he starred with in children of a lesser God. She's, um, hearing impaired actress I believe she was born deaf or anyway she she won an oscar for that her role in that movie well apparently they uh, had a very or he was very abusive toward her apparently and uh she wrote a she wrote her autobiography a number of years ago and, and chronicled their relationship and it does not paint him in a, in a favorable light at all although I read a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Although apparently he, they did talk about it and and kind of patch things up, but her description nonetheless is pretty pretty harrowing. Yeah. But um, pretty graphic. That kind, yeah. of, that kind of followed him around for a long time. But and he also had some people have accused him of being very difficult or very unpleasant to to deal with or to work with. But I've also heard the exact opposite that it's just he's a very quiet, very introverted man and didn't like. Like he loved acting, but he didn't like you know, being a star or a celebrity or whatever. So he kind of bristled at interviews and paparazzi stuff. I mean, he just wanted to do do his work. Um, but he also the criticism that was often leveled at him was his acting style. People would often kind of call him wooden or bland. That he kind of plays the same thing, kind of that does the same thing every role, and it's kind of like. I've seen him in a lot of stuff over the years, and I feel like that's a very incorrect assessment. It's like he was really good at playing characters who there was a lot going on on the inside. Like you could you could look at him and tell, like in a, in a certain role, that if he was conflicted or if there was something going on, I mean, he very much like internalized it. That's why I was saying like the Accidental Tourist is a movie where he plays this. Um, travel writer who he and his wife have split up because their son was killed in an accident and so their marriage breaks up and you know of course this is like a, a, a feel-good summer movie of course as i'm describing it but he yeah he can't wait to watch it yeah he closes himself off but then gina davis plays uh, a dog trainer because he decides to get a dog or somebody gives him a dog to kind of give him something to bond with since his wife has left him and he's lost his son. Gina Davis is the dog trainer and they wind up having a romance and, and everything. And, and it, he was so good in it because it's a comedy and he's not, you know, you don't, when you think comedy, you don't necessarily think William Hurt. You usually think like serious dramatic role, but it's surprisingly funny. And he pulls off this, very like suffering widow, you know, or ex-husband who's lost his child and trying to recover from that. And it's, it's one of the few like romantic comedies that I, from that eighties time period where I feel like it's a really sweet movie. It has such a sweet ending to it. And, uh, it's one of those, like, and I don't, <laughs> this doesn't happen to me often. Um, but it was like, it was a movie that kind of left me with a lump in my throat because it was just, so heartfelt and he's so great in it so that was like one of the first roles of his where i was like this guy's really good and um you know so well but before i forget before we switch to something else um one other thing i wanted to say about the show that he was on condor another reason to watch that show is brendan fraser is in it and brendan is awesome in it he's really really good in it so um yeah, check it out. It's, it's I'd uh, give it, yeah, I'd give that a try. I mean, I love Brandon Fraser anyway. It's just like I think he's yeah. Um, that yeah, I definitely would like to. And I said and, two and, seasons. And, and, and by you talking about Con Condor, Condor. Go ahead. Well, I was saying that there's two seasons of the show, but it's just been picked up for a third season. So it's definitely worth checking out. And it makes me think about Condor Man, and we need to watch that film. Oh, do we really? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm let's, sure. Let's, we let's to... say that we did. Let's say that we already watched it. Where there's an episode for it floating around there, and we can just check it off and move on. Check it off. 
I think I had the little book for that. I think I got the book for like, yeah, that and uh, Re- Remo, The Adventures of Remo Williams. Remo that was Williams. another one. Remo Williams, The Adventure Continues. The Adventure Continues. Fred Ward. I know, which is amazing that they that he he headlined that, but yep. Um, and you know, I, I told I you, I think we should do because Joel Gray plays like a little Asian man in like latex makeup. It is so like, like the what is it cultural appropriation? I think people today would have a just a field day with that movie because field day with it. It's so stupid. Well, I do think we gotta we gotta pull out a like I said a random. Like once a month, they got to do like a random film. You know, it could be. That's what could we be, should definitely it could, do. It could be funny. It could be. It could just be. I mean, it could. I mean, it could end up being really, really good. I'm not saying this has to be like, oh, we pick a, a, a classic B movie every time, but do something just a little. Yeah. A little different. No, I think that's a great one. Oh, that hmm. was. So yeah, we'll. So for the. Two people who are listening to this podcast. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Seven of. Hey, both of you. I appreciate both of you for listening to Actually, us. Actually, it's probably five. It, it says seven on the uh, Anchor app, but um, I'm thinking that's probably counting you and me because I always check the episode. Oh, well, notes. I think what it is is just, it's the same two people and they and they just keep logging into a different account to listen <laughs> to on another platform. It's like. If they listen on Spotify, they listen on Anchor, <laughs> and then they go to go to Apple, go to iTunes. Yeah, they're just yeah. So for those they're, listening, they're, they're they're blowing up our numbers to make it look like it's more bloated. Yeah, that's what. It is. Thanks for all that ad revenue, kids. Um, but yeah, that's for those listening. Yeah, we we that, I think Remo Williams would be a good one to do. I saw it about a year or so ago. I saw it during COVID, and. Uh, because I remembered as a kid, like really getting into it and thinking, man, this will be awesome as a movie series. But watching it again, I'm like, man, these special effects are horrible. <laughs> it's like there's so much in it that's just like so cheesy. Well, that that I mean, like that, I mean, like that goes back to, you know, Firestarter and those in the movies, all those movies from that time frame. That was before CGI. Oh, I mean, yeah. so it's kind of like so they were doing stuff. If, if they were if they're going to do anything, it's going to be you know using what like blue screens, not green screens. They're using blue screens back then. Mm-hmm. They had mats, you know, the matte backgrounds of stuff, and yeah. then or they'll do force perceptive type stuff like they did in Cat's Eye mm-hmm. type of um, or and what they even used in Back to the Future Three with the train mm-hmm. set. That's that's the same. You know, they they use models. I mean, I just these remember were, something else I wanted to been, tell you. So we were talking about Condor. Kate Vernon. Condor Man or Condor? Which one are we talking about? Condor. Okay. All right. Kate Vernon is in Condor. Do you remember that name? It's a movie that we covered. So I'll, I'll, I'll spare you the having to. She played Benny in Pretty in Pink. She was like the rich blonde haired girl that James Spader was with. That she yeah. Played, she plays um, William Hurt's wife in the movie. Or in the TV show. Well, William Hurt, William Hurt did well, uh, at least in looks. She looks great. She really, I mean, she looks fantastic in it. Um, yeah, she's, a, she's, I mean, she may have been had a nasty personality in that film, but she was a pretty, she was a pretty girl. I mean, well, I tell you what, she, she looks terrific in Condor, and I immediately, as soon as I saw her, because one of the first scenes is at a dinner party or something, if I remember correctly, and I, immediately, as soon as she spoke, I'm like. That's Kate Vernon from Pretty in Pink. Because I remember we had talked about her when we did our commentary. We talked about how she was still acting and and everything. So yeah, so so another reason for you to watch it. Um, she's in it, and it's a pretty prominent role. So uh, and she's great. She's great in it. I want to get us. I want to get a picture for. Uh... Yeah, I get, get a picture for uh, Instagram. Ah. So all you people out there who are our our, our six or two to six listeners that are listening, uh, you can follow us on Instagram. Yes, uh, the movie pod, the movie snap podcast, the midnight movie snap can, podcast. Guy can't the midnight even, movie snap podcast. Can't get the account name right. Thanks, Garrett. <laughs> people are going over to the 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 midnight podcast. So you're like, what kind of what, this is? Not this isn't them. <laughs> who are this? these people? Yeah, 
Yeah, it's the well, my snack's food. already gone, so that's why I guess I, I already yeah, ate I my snack, so I just yeah. left it out. My bag's and in. it's not midnight yet. Oops, sorry, it's it's midnight somewhere. Uh, Look, dude, I don't have to about that. I'm tell you that. Like you're 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 totally blowing the illusion here. Every time you say, "Well, it's not a, it's not midnight." Yes, it is. It is midnight, right? Well, now. hey, I used to say all the time when I when I I, I, used to, I used to try to make sure I made a point when we got to midnight to make sure I was like, "Hey, it's midnight." By the way. Yeah. It's yeah, and I edited thing. those out too, by the way, just so you know. Every time you would say, it's midnight now, I'm like, I'd cut. <laughs> just took it right out. So your references to actual midnight have been deleted from, I think, from most episodes. No! <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, it's midnight. Midnight is a state of mind on this podcast. It's not a literal. Yeah. It's a literal for me because I <laughs> midnight's my, it can, it can it's my time of night anyway. For you, but I will just edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> um so one of the thing i wanted to talk about because i know i want to i'm being respectful of the fact i know we both have a busy day tomorrow and we need our rest at our age um but, or at least at my age i don't know so you're much it's, you're younger my, it's mine i need it i mean it's a long day man i hey but, i uh, can't so i you. wound up seeing the batman a second time colin wanted to go see it so i took him to see it and I just wanted to say for those folks who haven't seen it yet, or maybe you've seen it once and you're like, I wonder if I should see it again. You should definitely see it again. It, it is definitely worth a second viewing. There's a lot of stuff that you pick up on and there's like some really cool things that you pick up on watching it a second time. But I got to say it went by fast, even faster like, I mean, you know, it's almost three hours. And I think you and I both commented for a three hour movie, it went by, you know, pr at a pretty decent pace. I mean, there were a couple of places I think were a little slow, but for the most part, I mean, it went by. This time, it went by super fast. And even going by super fast, there were just a lot of things that I picked up on. Um, and, you know, I'd, of course, I picked on them then, but I'm sitting here trying to recall them. And of course, I didn't write anything down, but I think just a lot of the what the movie does in setting things up for the big reveal at the end. And then um, Colin, my 15 year old, he picked up on some things as well, but I got to tell you, so today we were in the car. Um, his girlfriend uh, had a music concert and so he wanted to go. So I took him to see it and uh, in the car, I'm listening to Sirius XM nineties on nine and they start playing the Nirvana song, something in the way, which is used in the movie. And my son who's sitting there with his earbuds in listening to whatever he listens to, he looks at the screen. He's like, that's a movie from Batman. And I'm like, yeah. So we sat there and listened to Nirvana in the car on the way to the concert. But, um, yeah. So that's just, cool. wanted to, just wanted to mention, it's definitely worth seeing a second time. And I, and I actually think when it comes out on Blu-ray, I'm going to pick it up because, um, there's, there's a, just a, there's so much like they've put the director, the writer and director put so much detail into the movie that I think watching it again, you, you just pick up on these little details here and there that, um, it just, it's a, I think it's a really good movie. And my 15 year old has said that it is not only his favorite Batman movie, it is his favorite movie of all time right now, which I know is likely to change as time goes by, but he was really Stoked about probably <laughs> yeah but it is good i mean that's the thing about it you know i mean like it's the same way when we saw spider-man for the first time with toby mcguire it was just yeah. you know it was quite it was very impressive same i mean same way we saw batman that the, the in the original batman with michael keaton that's i mean i had the same feeling about it that's as i did seeing superman mm -hmm. um it's you know it's these are these are time pieces are like the you know, whatever you want to call it, like those, that those moments, um, can't think of what I'm trying to, I try, I'm trying to come up with my head. I my head, I got a word, but I can't get it to come out, but it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's important at that point in time. It's for sure. I think it's, I, I think it will stand for, I mean, even in the future when there's, when there's other Batmans and new Batman films or whatever, people are still going to look back on, on this, the Batman and be like, Oh, that was really good. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's one that's going to be like, it, it won't be like Spider-Man three. I'm, you know, I'm not, and I'm not trying to be ugly. It just, you know, people go, Oh yeah. Mm. 
yeah. you know the, how cool that dancing scene the is one thing but still that um about the movie watching it a second time that it's something i picked up on the first time but just watching it carefully the second time is so we talked about for for years about how Batman was portrayed like in the in the 80s and then with the Michael Keaton movie and beyond and, and past that as always portraying Batman as a very dark, very violent, you know, very grim superhero. And it seemed like especially when the Ben Affleck movies, Batman movies, like they were really pushing that dark, you know, and it's so so much so that everything, Superman and all of it became dark and edgy and brooding kind of thing. Um what I like about this movie is that you get that in this movie, but then you also get Batman at the end realizing that it's it's not vengeance, it's hope and being a beacon of hope to the people of Gotham. And to me, it's like, I think that right there is something amazing. And, I, and nobody's really, as far as I know, nobody's really talking about this, but I fully expect that as people look back on this movie, they're going to be like, this is where, this is a movie that kind of got Batman back to where he was before all the dark, moody, gritty kind of stuff. Because like, even before, like, like we've talked about Frank Miller and the Dark Knight Returns graphic novel that he did, uh, and how that really kind of pushed things with batman even though it's it's basically like an um, you know else worlds it's like a alternate universe batman um but they just took it and just kind of went in that direction whereas before it's like batman was still kind of like this you know superhero that dealt in the shadows but he wasn't like i mean he was still like relatable like or he was still like yes he was grieving the loss of his parents and this whole mission was to avenge his parents but you know, he was still able to have interactions with other heroes in a way that wasn't just like, oh, that's Batman. He's always brooding, you know, kind of thing. It was like, no, he actually, right. he actually could be a superhero as opposed, it's like, kind of like I liken it to Batman was a superhero. They turned him into a vigilante. And I feel like this movie put it in reverse order of like, okay, he's a vigilante, but at the end of it, he's now a superhero because he, you know, saved the people of Gotham. He was committed right. to helping the people of Gotham. And um, so, yeah, so I think it's, I, I really like what they did. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the sequel to see if they continue to go in that direction with it. So, anyway, just good stuff. I mean, he was, and in, in, just, just by him helping, you know, Gordon, I think that, that shows his, his, um, desire to to, yeah. to to try to work within the parameters of the law Absolutely. more than just trying to be and what a great a vigilante you know and have like i'm telling you this movie like the relationship with batman and gordon is so good it is like it is exactly in my opinion it is exactly what i've been wanting to see like them take from the, the comics because you know if you look at the comics i mean they do they have they have a working relationship they're partners in a sense um and i feel like you know the christopher nolan movies kind of were doing that somewhat but this just felt like okay gordon's a lieutenant he's a, he's a good cop in a place where there's crooked cops and he sees what batman's doing and he sees you know what he's able to do things that i can't do but he's helping me and i'm helping him but ultimately at the end of the day we're getting rid of the the bad element, you know? And so it's kind of like, but Jeffrey Wright watching it a second time, Jeffrey Wright is so good as Gordon. I mean, he just nails it, nails it in, in such a way that it's like, I liken it to, so in Marvel before the movies, Nick Fury was a white character, right? He was a white man. Yes. In the Marvel movies was. introduced Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury and he killed it. And now it's like, They've basically, in the comics and in the animated stuff, Fury is Samuel L. Jackson. It's kind of like this where Jeffrey Wright was so good as Gordon, I would not be surprised if they did something similar that you see the comics shift and that Gordon becomes, you know, like African-American 
character, which, but Jeffrey Wright was just so good in it. And, um, and even like Zoe Kravitz, you know I mean? Watching her a second time, um, she really, she really did a good job. Uh, she was really good as a cat woman. Is it, is a, I was impressed with her, you know, cat woman before she was cat woman. Um, so, so yeah, uh, it's, so I highly recommend seeing it a second time. If, if anybody is on the fence about it, definitely go see it a second time. It's worth it. So, well, I really I agree. And, and, and listen, and listen to the podcast one more time on, on the Batman. Absolutely. While you're at it. Absolutely. You can find out what we <laughs> thought about the movie. And if you haven't listened right. to that episode yet, I haven't listened. It's a good man, time to go back and listen. That's, man, that's like one of the fringe benefits of having you on this podcast is you always kind of help bring it back to like, Hey, don't forget this episode where we like, yes, the more episodes you folks listen to, the better. It makes us very happy. And, uh, right. we, we definitely appreciate it. Um, was there anything it's else? Fu- and hey, I mean, and here's something I'll tell you. I, yeah. I mean, if for those of you think that that we just record and hope people listen, it's like, I mean, I get a lot of I get a lot of entertainment value out of listening to us. Yeah. It's and honestly, it's not trying to be that's it's not bragging. It's just saying sometimes it's crack, you know, we crack ourselves up. Yeah. It's not about that we take ourselves too seriously. It's not about, oh, we're the best podcast ever. But yeah. the fact that we, but, 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 but that we enjoy, uh, I mean, I have a good time going back and listen and go, oh, oh man, yeah. I can't believe we said that or yeah, yeah. that happened. Or there are some things I've listened to as well. And it just makes me laugh all over again. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I come from the, you know, I mean, this whole thing started because during COVID where you and I hadn't seen each other in months and we, you know, we're definitely always seeing movies together and, it just kind of, and I think we had been talking for a while about we should do a podcast because we would have lunch together and we have these great conversations and we're like we should do a podcast, and then COVID happened and they were like well hey let's watch a movie over Zoom and it just kind of took off from there but yeah my whole mindset is well yeah I love people downloading the episode listening to it and sometimes people have actually commented and said one really nice things, um, but. There is a part of me that's like, well, you know, whether we have five listeners or 500, I, I just like, I, I make it, or, you know, I doing this with you is just, I enjoy it. It's just a nice way for us to connect, even though COVID has become, it's getting in the rear view mirror more and more every day, it seems. Um, and we're able to see each other more often, but it's still, it's just. Let me give a shout out it. to one of our listeners. Yeah. Um, one of our listeners, Chris Holloman. I went to school with Chris. Uh, his his son, his stepson, plays soccer with my son, okay. my oldest. And uh, he was he was telling me that he listened to our episode on screen. And yeah. he says, and I and I gotta and he says, what kind of research do you guys do? He goes, you guys. I mean, which we just we just we, we admittedly just said on this episode. We did not, we did not do much research on this episode, but he was very impressed with our research. And I was like, well, man, sometimes, you know, when we're, you know, when we really get into something, I said, yeah, we really go down a rabbit hole yeah. and we just, you know, it's, it's kind of like you and I back at the library trying to find that episode, trying to find that, that, that missing location oh, yeah. in a fire starter about, you know, you're blind. I mean, that was, I could, we could, and I may I may do a whole little episode on that on the on YouTube yeah, as well, like the but just about how... episode that whole thing. It, were, it was it was I took crazy. Scans of the images from the film. I was doing reverse negative and stuff, trying to figure out what those numbers on that mailbox were. But yeah, it was like an episode of was, like some detective show where like we got to find the numbers on this. We got to find where this house is. I know it was it was really it was that was hard. That was a hard one. That was, like, was. not harder than I thought it was going to be. But it was very satisfying when you finally cracked it and you were like, yeah, that's it. That's oh my it. gosh. It was. Yeah, it was, it felt like it me. was, but Perfect. yeah, but so back, back to Chris, thank you, Chris, for listening. We yeah, appreciate thanks, Chris. you listening to us. Um, He's the first yeah. guy we've shot. We gave a shout out to that listens. To yes. The so, hey, so thanks. Us, Chris. Yeah. Tell your friends, let us know. Like I said, on Instagram, the Midnight Movie Snap Podcast. <laughs> Me- mess- right. Message Chris. And we're kind of sort um, of on Twitter. I mean, I post stuff on Twitter. I don't really. Um, that that one is TMMS Podcast. Um, and we're also on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash the Midnight Movie Snap Podcast. I believe that's what it is. Um, so, yeah. 
Well, this was you know, it's a short episode, but it was a good one. We I think we covered a lot of stuff. Um, you know, David Keith is the man. David and Keith. Happy rest, birthday, Kurt Russell. Happy birthday, okay. Kurt rest, Russell. Rest in peace. And I, uh, yeah. And happy St. Patrick's Day. And happy St. Patrick's is, Day, even though I didn't wear green today. Nobody pinched me, fortunately. Um, I'm not wearing green either, but it's wearing my, Aveng- my red Avengers t-shirt in like, honor of William Hurt. like, pinch me. I don't care. Come at me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, well, hey, my son's, my son's a ginger, so I feel yeah. like I'm just like, we're very, you know, we got already got the look the leprechaun. Yeah. So I had to go so real quick. Speaking of St. Patrick's, I had to stop at uh, the gas station. I went to a Sheets, and I had to go inside. And I was standing in line to check out, and there was uh, a dad with two kids. And if there was any doubt that they were Irish, I mean, they were all dressed in green for St. Patrick's, but the dad and the kids it was a boy. I think two boys, red hair, ginger, like as Irish ginger as you could get. And I mean, I was, seriously, I was expecting them to be like, oh, where's me Lucky Charms, you know, or something like yeah. that, because they were like, I remember a couple of people were standing like, like in line with me. And when they walked out, we just kind of looked at each other like, well, that was an Irish moment. <laughs> so that was. Yeah. Yeah. So happy St. Patrick's Day. All right, man. You've been listening to the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast. Visit us on Instagram at the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast. You can also follow us on Twitter at TMMS Podcast. Be sure to check out Garrett's YouTube channel, All Things 80s with Garrett. For more about the podcast, visit our site, the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast.com. Until next time, thanks for listening.